radical left winger George Soros is amassing tremendous political power with the help of some mainstream media. We'll have a factor investigation. Factor has been investigating far left billionaire George Soros, a man who wants to impose a radical left agenda on America. And under the radar, he is making great progress. Soros has set up a complicated political operation designed to do two things buy influence among some liberal politicians and smear people with whom he disagrees. An extremist who wants open borders, a one world foreign policy, legalized drugs, euthanasia, and on and on. My book Culture Warrior documents the Soros policy and his tax evading businesses located in Curacao and Bermuda. Monica, I'll begin with you. Uh, did I leave anything out? No, I think you were right on. And you know what? This is an incredibly well oiled, brilliantly orchestrated machine. Here he is on his reelect Barack Obama. Get involved. Launching attackwatch.com. This is the president's website. The president is using that brilliant mind in Harvard education to find new ways to fight off terrorist attacks. No, not actually. No. What he's looking to do here on his official website, BarackObama.com, um, is to monitor inaccuracies, falsehoods, gossips, and smear. Well, now, if it wasn't, if they just left it at that, I would say these guys are going to be busy just in the White House looking at all the things that they're doing. But no, these are smears, falsehoods, and lies against President Obama. Now, if that description sounds suspiciously similar to the other 900 progressive groups created by George Soros, you be right. Check out one of their first attacks. That's me. Their first attack. Conservative pundit Glenn Beck added his voice to a growing collection of false allegations about the president's record on Israel. We're talking a lot about Israel, said Beck, the president of the United States, I believe has betrayed our last strong ally. Okay, that's an opinion. Mr. President, are you now trying to stifle people's opinions? The website says get the facts about President Obama's ironclad commitment to Israel's security. Yeah, when he claps them in iron, yeah, that's true. <laughs> then share the truth with your friends. That's what it says here. But you'll notice that uh, when you click on this stuff, guess who they are listing as a source? The George Soros funded Media Matters. Now, hang on just a second. I have to see if I get this one right. They said I was a conspiracy theorist because I said the president was in league with George Soros and Media Matters to destroy enemies uh, of the White House. And yet here it is on their own site. Somebody at Attack Watch should call Attack Watch because I think they may be conspiracy theorists. <laughs>
Yet where Freud sought to uncover motivations, Bernays sought to mask them, and Bernays' clients were companies rather than individuals. For example, one of his early cases involved Lucky Strike cigarettes in the 1920s. The American tobacco company asked him to expand sales. Women would be an ideal market, but there were problems. First, women didn't care for the green packaging of Lucky Strikes, and the manufacturer concluded that changing the color was too expensive. Second, it was taboo for women to smoke in public. Bernays took a unique approach to these obstacles. First, he recommended that, if the packs must stay green, they should make green the premier color of the fashion season. During his green ball campaign, Bernays convinced French designers to incorporate green into their latest fashion lines, and not just any green, but the specific dark green shade of Lucky Strike packaging. He also engineered a green gala at the Waldorf Astoria, featuring some of society's most prominent tastemakers. To address the problem of smoking in public, he linked Lucky Strike cigarettes to the women's liberation movement, arranging for young women to march down Fifth Avenue, smoking and calling the cigarettes torches of freedom. Instead of appearing to sell cigarettes, this seemingly spontaneous march appeared to be a part of the struggle for gender equality. Aldous Huxley, the author of A Brave New World, he said in an interview back in 1958 that the social engineers of the future, they will figure out a way to enslave us by tricking us and conditioning all of us into thinking that we are actually free. This was also well thought out and researched by the father of propaganda, Edward Bernays who in his 1928 book, Propaganda, Bernays wrote, if we understand the mechanisms and motives of the group mind, it is now possible, now possible to control and regiment the masses according to our will without them knowing it. Now, Alex Jones with Paul Joseph Watson wrote, Why the Elite Would Lose a Civil War is a part two. In the part one, they explain why the elite are seeking a civil war. Uh, basically, it's a tactic of division. It's a tactic of weakening confidence in the American system, uh, scaring away investors, and, of course, setting up the New World Order system, the bankers themselves, as the saviors to basically seize upon uh, civil unrest, uh, broken down economy and everything else because they're the ones who institute order out of chaos, of course, and outlining how really the system is showing us in so many ways through their amassing of bullets, through the continuity of government plan, through their homeland security occupation plan, how they want a war with Americans and how they're preparing for it and really trying to incite it over the course of the next five to ten years. We don't really know if that is the timeline, uh, but of course they factor in comments like those of Al Sharpton recently who said, Americans, don't try to give me that nonsense about the Second Amendment. Your guns wouldn't do anything to stop drones. You're occupied by the American government already, so just give in and also shut up about that Second Amendment because you're ruled by drones. Well, history does not show that to be the case, and in spite of increasing technological diversionary tactics of increased domination through the system using drones, using tactical nudes, using uh, perhaps a biochemical weapon, whatever. We see throughout history, in spite of all that, and in spite of huge standing armies, that resistance itself is its own force. It's difficult to deal with. And even in the case of Iraq, where you had 17,000 troops trying to block the roads, they couldn't quite do it. In Afghanistan, no empire has ever been able to defeat those mountain people, uh, not necessarily the Taliban, those who are actually engaged in some form of terrorism, but the whole of the people who said they don't want to be occupied by any empire and that they know the land and that as long as they resist, Basically, we've been unable to defeat them, even though their numbers are maybe 25,000 at the most, and we have hundreds of thousands of troops in those countries and in the general area. We have superior weapons. doesn't really matter as long as there's a true spirit of resistance there. So the question is, 
if something like that comes to our country, do we still have the spirit of resistance? Because resistance is victory. If they ever did start a civil war, even if you wrote off 90% of the population to being complacent with that system, to going along with it, if 5% of the population, if 10% resisted, that not only literally outnumbers any army forces controlled by the government now, but it's also a people who cannot be conquered through spirit because you can always find a way to resist. Even if you are disarmed, there's ways to destabilize the enemy. And once you have victories, if they're moral victories, those amplify, those resonate with the people and the sympathy starts to turn back towards the rightful people, if right is on your side. Obviously, America today is not a country like that. We are an open society. We have pluralistic media. We have the rule of law. And nevertheless, the propaganda methods described in uh, uh, Orwell's 1984, Newspeak, which is basically a language of deliberate deception, is flourishing in America today. Reaching my jaw to taste the blood of a lost cause Invading the body, the prophecy of Amun Ra Of course the force of plot defies a lost pride Multiplying sanity times by and by and by The beginning of an age where brain waves can wage war Permeating soldiers to the state core Evolving from the primitive beings Once contained within the realm commonly known as home With blown minds, infiltrated phone lines Paranoia clouds of thought present the intent to vent We've been sent to change the world of minds at a time Combine the signs to find the sands of time Capture my life within a pile of tears After my first birth Translated to the margin of this one man's quest In depth with our dimension Exacerbating natural selection The depth perception As we dance in the shadows of the falling gavel Travel astral projections Inspect the nexus Correctly assess the text To turn a blind eye With figures of speech A mission to reach your mind Expanding the perimeter distension Incorporating infrared heating and frequencies The regency depends on the path Of which we approach as man's hope shall approach the man the minds behind these rhymes remaining in the world of words and the sounds we paint. It's our world we're trying to elevate. We elaborate and concentrate to present our intent to create. The masterminds behind these rhymes remaining in the world of words and the sounds we paint. It's our world we're trying to elevate. We elaborate and concentrate to present our intent to create. Words keep on slipping, my mind keeps on tripping. Spinal fluid dripping and ache in my chest until I release the rhymes which are poisonous to the young and ignorant. Just figure in my temperament takes control. Which is released through my mind flow Save it for the show Real mathematical, magical tactics For the misinformed scratch this Dark hallways that continue to wander The light at the end, nothing left to ponder The somber memories Fake friends who pretend to be the best thing you've ever seen Leave me alone You can't listen to what I've shown Step back from this microphone and stand alone I don't need anyone to show me the sun The right direction, I've already read this section I'm electing Hayden to run these beats And he's dependent on me to throw this heat To defeat and Enemies at my feet, so grab a seat and shut you. You know what? Keep you twisted. I know which way is up. I told you my anger takes control. Grab a hanger and tear open your cerebro. The masterminds behind these rhymes remaining in the world of words and the sounds we paint. It's our world we're trying to elevate. We elaborate and concentrate to present our intent to create. The masterminds behind these rhymes remaining in the world of words and the sounds we paint. It's our world we're trying to elevate. We elaborate and concentrate to present our intent. To